Hey everyone, thanks for coming back and uh, watching the next section of my top 100 games of all time. Uh, today we're going over 90 through 81. Uh, this is, uh, before I get started, Candyland will not be on the top 100. So Jonathan Durand and Brendan Quebedo, you can stop commenting about how happy you are that it's higher up on the list. It's not on the list. And now I know you're planning on commenting that, oh, it's a big surprise, big reveal that Candyland is going to be Murph's number one. Candyland is not on the top 100. I promise you. Uh, there's a lot of games in this ten in these in this ten that I uh, don't own. This is the most on the list. Um, I only own three of these ten. Um, so, but I'll talk about those as I go through. So, uh, my apologies for the lack of props. Number 90 is a game called Eternal Dynasty, which I had never heard of before my friend Bob picked it up at a thrift store. And it's an area control game uh, set in China. Um, I don't know my ch Chinese history, but, you know, back in the day in the, fe in the feudal era. Um, and it's really good. It, it distills kind of area control and different player powers down to its very basics um we <laughs> bob and kenny and i have played it several times i think we've only played it with three people um we need to try it with four uh but we also always forget that it's an option and then a year later we're like oh yeah we haven't played eternal dynasty in a while um so yeah big fan it'll be it might be higher once we play it more and get to know it better that's number 90, Eternal Dynasty. Number 89 is a game called Planet, which I played for the first time not too long ago. My friend Jonathan has this game, and it's these big, chunky, like, 12-sided, like, shapes. Um, and they have magnets on them, and you have to, like, draft the various kinds of topography and make your own planet. And it's weird and insane, and I love it. The reason I love it, and I will probably never play it again, is that I don't think too long on my turn about what is absolutely the best call. And that's in almost all games. I just do not think too long. I'm like, yeah, well, let's, you know, I'll, I'll think about it a little bit, and if my gut's wrong, my gut's wrong, and whatever. Um, other people would tend to try to optimize this game absolutely, which could make it drag. Um, so I can understand why a lot of people don't like Planet, but it made the top 100 at 89. Number 88 is a game I do own. This is a game called Chai. Um, I went to my first board game convention about a year ago, PAX Unplugged. As I was going, I asked online, I was like, hey, I'm going to PAX Unplugged. Anybody have anything, ideas for something I should check out? And uh, my friend Dan from undergrad is like, oh yeah, you need to check out his friend Dan's uh, booth because he's published this board game. And so I got to meet the designer of the game, Dan uh, Kazmaier. Uh, I didn't get to meet Connie, she wasn't there. Um, and it's a really excellent game. So we played a demo. We were taught by Dan's dad, who was a wonderful guy. And uh, this is a game all about tea. There's all these lovely components here, including like little wooden pieces of tea. Um, and there's a bunch of cards. I probably should grab the card that has Dan's dad on it, which is very fun. Um, there's a card with Uncle Iroh on it from Avatar. Great game. Um, it reminds me kind of of a little bit more complex than Ticket to Ride, but kind of in that same thing. I don't know if I would use it as, you know, an introductory game or a gateway game, as we say. But uh, I, I think it really works well. Um, big fan. Um, also, the theme is great because you drink tea while you play the game. So kudos, uh, Dan and Connie Kazmaier. Uh, that's number 88, Shy. Number 87 is a game I don't own called Rum and Pirates. Um, and this game, my friend Kenny owns, owns this game. It's a very odd game because everyone is controlling the pirate captain in the middle. And you move him to, on the board and you move him to different spots and you leave your pirates in, in his wake. The theming is kind of weird, but it kind of works. Um, very fun. Takes a little long for what it is, and uh, but it's if you want a longer game that's not too thinky, like doesn't cause you to, to hurt your head thinking too much. Roman Pirates, pretty good game. On the opposite end of that spectrum is Saint Petersburg, 
which doesn't take too long, but is incredibly thinky. Um, it, I honestly struggle to recommend St. Petersburg because the kind of people who like it um, are few and far between. And I don't mean that as some sort of a, you know, look at me, I'm a board game snob, though obviously I am. Um, but it's, it, there's sometimes when I'm like, do I even like this? Or is this just a big, long, complicated math problem with pictures on it? Um, St. Petersburg is vaguely Russian themed. Doesn't really come through that much. Um, but it's a good game. It's very, very mathy. Uh, very much optimizing your points and the amount of money you have to buy cards. Tricky game, but good game. Number 85 is Catan, or Catan, whatever you want to call it. This is the expansion. This is City Knights of Catan. Um, I am including the expansion. I'm kind of like averaging the base game with Cities and Knights specifically. There's a lot of expansions for Catan. Um, this one, Cities and Knights, Amazing game. Base game can't Catan, eh, it's okay. Um, which may be heresy to some people. Uh, I got this game back in the late 90s, um, so well before it was cool. This is now kind of the game that people think of when you talk about strategy games. Um, and yeah, I mean, there you have all these hexes, you build little settlements and cities on them. It's a good game. The expansion Cities and Knights makes it a really good game. Big fan. Um, so I kind of averaged them out and put it on here at number 85. Number 84 is a game called Seasons that I have only ever played online on Board Game Arena. It is a weird drafting game where you're drafting these cards, but then you also have to play them, and then you're... So it's only partially drafted. You just draft at the beginning. It's hard to explain... Um, you move your, you move this little guy along the seasons track. It's very odd. I don't know how to explain it. Um, but all the cards obviously like have special abilities and things like that. Um, good game, very different than anything else I can think of. Um, number 83 is a deck building game called Eminent Domain, which I have a love hate relationship with. Um, Eminent Domain, first of all, terrible name. It's a game about, like, it's it's a science fiction game about, like, exploring the galaxy. And, yeah, you could conquer, but you don't have to. And, like, Eminent Domain is just a weird name for that. Uh, this game is one of the least intuitive games I've ever played. By which I mean, like, if you are just learning this game, you're like, well, why does it work that way? I, I cannot explain to you why it works that way. I can explain to you how the game works, but I cannot explain why it's why you have to add a card to take its action at the end of the turn. And by building your deck, you're also taking actions that other people can follow, a la Puerto Rico. Um, weird game. And uh, very good but very unintuitive, so it's not a game where you can just turn your brain off and have a good time. you you got to be thinking pretty hard in this game. Number 82 is a game everyone's heard of. Chess. Um, chess, this is a game that I've learned before most all the other games on my list, kind of obviously. Um, I believe this set was given to me by my sister-in-law, Becca, um, in which case... Thanks, Becca. Great set. Love this. Um, if it wasn't Becca, I apologize to whoever gave me this game and I forgot what it is. Um, look at those little knights. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I played chess once over the pandemic over Facebook Messenger with, with Matthew. Uh, my friend Matthew and I were like, you know, doing the like, using the chess notation. So like pawn to E6 and stuff like that, which was fun, kind of old timey. Um, how you used to play chess back in the day before they had all these apps and whatnot. Um, but yeah, the, the number one person I have to talk about when I talk about chess is my dad. So my dad taught me how to play chess when I was, I don't know how old, younger than 10. Um, and we used to play, uh, there's some good pictures of us playing when I was probably eight years old. Um, and my, my sister looking on when she was just but a wee babe. Um, and 
Yeah. Chess is one of those games where it's very much a lifestyle game. People play chess and they only play chess. I tried that for a little bit. Like I was in, in a chess club when I was in high school and we went, I went to a tournament and it was fine, but like people take it way too seriously. Um, but yeah, chess, I really enjoy it. But one of the reasons I enjoy it the most is just memories of playing this with my dad. And, uh, you know, he wouldn't hold back. And for a long time there, he beat me every time we played. And then we started getting even. And then I started beating him every time we played. Um, but yeah, so thanks, Dad, for teaching me to enjoy chess. Really good times. Um, that's number 82. Number 81, another game I don't own. It's called Imperial Settlers. I've only played it once. Um, there's actually a new version, like kind of a sequel to this game called Imperial Settlers Empires of the North that is probably at the top of my want to play list, um, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. In Imperial Settlers, you're taking a civilization and you're, you are, it's, there's, you're building up kind of an engine and a tableau. It's a tableau builder, if you will, um, where you can take all these upgraded actions by doing various things. Um, but the different civilizations competing with each other and, and how they work in different ways, really love that. Uh, big fan. So that's the list for right now. That's, uh, let's see, 90 through 81. Hope you enjoyed. Um, and yeah, let me know. Uh, let me know what you think. And a reminder, Candyland will not be on the top 100. No wink, it will not be. <laughs>